The tour is really about exposing the realities of environmental justice, both the problems, the struggles, and the, the kinds of solutions that EJ activists are putting into play in the San Joaquin Valley. We have about 20 people, and there's a mix of uh, officials from the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences and environmental justice advocates uh, and researchers from the UC Davis uh, Environmental Health Science Center. And we're here to learn from each other, um, for the EJ activists to share their stories, uh, and to, uh, to really understand the issues of air quality, water quality, pesticides, and, and other issues that are affecting people's lives and health in the San Joaquin Valley. Does anybody still need a community profile yeah. handout? It's just, I think we really have to think deeply about how much taxpayer money and including residents who are being impacted is being given and what sort of impact is being had on the residents who are living next door to the, the facilities. So we're going to stop here and talk to Katie, who lives in this house. I'm concerned about, you know, all of this stuff, pollution and all of these other things, all this added traffic, all this added noise and stuff that's that has generated as a result of down here, down here. The well water and stuff has just been bad for a long period of time. I came out here and that landfill was being used and I see what went into that landfill and it's the same person that owns all that property. That people out here that, you know, that live out here, they, they think, well, these guys don't fish in too much for our campaign or whatever and, you know, they will just push them over. I mean, that's their idea. It seemed like they just wanted to push us over. This tour, built as an environmental justice tour, has shown me the extent of environmental injustice that is occurring in the San Joaquin Valley. There are so many problems that people who live here are facing, not of their own creation. I am learning so much from what people are telling us, people from the communities who really know how the different environmental problems are impacting their lives. Because our environment is our health, and who knows their health and their environment better than the people who are impacted. So when I became the director nine and a half years ago, I insisted that all of our center's programs all have to have a community engagement core, because the community is where the action is. So welcome to Stockton, California, the 13th largest city. The Scientist Community Partnership is, is something that we've really been building and developing out of our center. And it's a two-way street. So we learn a tremendous amount from the community. And then we're trying to do science that will then provide data in which the activists can actually use those data and argue more effectively for the kinds of changes that they need in their communities. So this is what we did. We put these together, we're using Figaro sensors that send out an infrared laser and read the total VOCs in the air, right? And so from this, we were able, we were able to, to start looking at trends, right? This is a, this is a in July of 2018, uh, the city of Arvin passed their first oil and gas ordinance uh, updating regulations in the city since 1963. And so it was a huge victory because we used, the, the community used uh, data that was gathered by them, uh, analyzed by partners like UC Davis and others that really gave them the ability to message this and create it, this story of their own. Uh, the city council members listened to their community and not special interests and got a huge victory uh, updating their oil and gas ordinance rules in the city of, of Arvin, which primarily will create setbacks between oil and gas production and where community members live. And so this victory really shows the power that data and collaboration have between community groups, research groups, and nonprofit organizations. It's really that meshing of, of energies, ideas, and uh, really free thought that really could put this together. Our children are sacred and they're being traumatized. By no choice of their own, by the zip code, they're determining the life expectancy of folks here. We can't agree. Why, Why is that? Community 
engagement is, is really central to the Environmental Health Science Center um, and, and we see it as uh, critical for a number of reasons. One is that communities know the issues that they're facing. They're also people with significant expertise around how the research can be applied to uh, to uh, informing public policy and providing resources for community advocacy and those kinds of uses of the research can't happen unless there's this very active partnership. Um, it, we've also found that researchers get really inspired to see the impacts of their research um, so it's really a motivating force for them. Um, it also can create a uh, STEM pipeline for young people in these communities to see that researchers in the sciences um, uh, are, that's a career that they could actually follow. Um, so it creates this long-term um, generational effect. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.